Everyone Koa here, just hanging out in a creek. It's a normal Thursday for me. It's a little chilly, 37.9 degrees in here. Almost freezing. But late last year, I was able to do a collaboration with wildlife expert and master naturalist Ty Smith, aka the Snake Man down in Southern Virginia. And originally, this video was just gonna be showing our really awesome exploration where we found three rare animals in Virginia. A salamander, a frog, and even a fish. But during that collaboration, I learned that Ty was on a quest of his own to find as many reptiles and amphibians as he could uh, in a single year, mostly in Virginia. And so when I got back home and I checked his numbers and his progress, I realized that he was doing something absolutely remarkable, and so I want to share it with you. But before we even get into the cool herping adventure where Ty and I found three rare Virginian species, and before I even explain the mind-boggling number of reptiles and amphibians that Ty found last year, let me first explain how that crazy wildlife-filled day began. But I think I'm gonna head back to the studio first because even though I got neoprene waders on right now, it is cold out. <laughs> oh, it's a lot warmer in here. Okay, so a few months back, I headed down from my neck of the woods in Northern Virginia to a few hours south where Ty lives in Southern Virginia. We began the morning by filming a video using seven different species of Ty's turtles to explain proper turtle ownership and care and why you should really keep most wild turtles wild. Then we shot another video to help out our fellow herpers distinguish the often confused American Toad, Southern Toad, and Fowler's Toad. And both those videos are already produced and the links are in the description if you want to check them out. Then we took the afternoon to head to the Nottoway River where Ty showed me his techniques for catching really nice specimens of bull chub, a video of which I'll probably produce on the KN Fishing Smarts YouTube channel, our Koa Nature sister channel. Then we finished the early evening by fishing a swamp before beginning our night herping adventure around a few southwestern parts of Virginia, North Carolina, where I got to see just how this master herper actually finds so many amazing animals. So let's talk about those animal observations of Ty's that has me so baffled. So like me, Ty is an avid user of iNaturalist, where he records observations of many of his wildlife encounters. Last year, in 2020, he recorded observations of 860 different species of animals. Not just 860 animals, 860 different species of more than 3,000 different specimens. 285 of those species were birds. And for his creme de la creme, big herp year project, he recorded seeing 145 different species from 1,500 plus unique specimens of reptiles and amphibians, where a whopping 123 of those observations were in Virginia alone. Now let me just put that into perspective for you if you're really wondering, is that a high number or not? So last year was my most productive year for herping in Virginia as I was able to grab observation photos of 35 different species of reptiles and amphibians, and that's a pretty decent number. Anyone in the mid 40s or 50s is doing something impressive. But here is the real shocker. There are only about 154 species of reptiles and amphibians in Virginia, and only 148 species have ever been observed in Virginia on the INAT records, and Ty found 123 of them in a single year. Ty's passion for finding these animals is tremendous. When he's not working, he's learning about these animals as he explores for them as well. He went all over Virginia last year. Each one of those red spots marks an observation he made. He ventured across mountains and went into caves, swamps, creeks, forests, fields, and to the ocean. Some of these animals are extremely difficult to find, or they may be localized to only a few mountain peaks or individual caverns and found nowhere else in the world. 
And during these wildlife expeditions, he gathers lots of knowledge about these animals along the way, of which he is able to pass on when he is educating others. He also took a trip down to Florida during the later months of the year, finding some more really cool species of animals along the way. And these observations when posted on the iNaturalist platform are valuable data points for various researchers and people working within wildlife management because the more we understand about any species population ranges, density, habitat usage, etc., the better we can work towards ensuring better wildlife management techniques. So if you want to be a citizen scientist and contribute some data to science and have some fun along the way, get on iNaturalist. It's free and you can find Ty and his big year project under the username profile at Ty Smith. But 123 species of reptiles and amphibians in Virginia in one year. It's amazing. It really is. No one on iNaturalist has recorded observing more species of reptiles and amphibians in Virginia than Ty Smith, let alone even approaching 123 species in a single year. The snake man definitely takes herping to another level, and so it's an honor that I was able to go out herping with him and learn a thing or two, of which I'm glad I can pass on to you in the last half of this video. And as you'll see, I found species with Ty that were lifers for me, or species that I've never found before. So here we go, our first herps were actually found at the Nottoway River while we were fishing. A bunch of fowler's toads were hopping around, and these young little fence lizards were basking on some rocks. So technically we're supposed to be shooting the fishing video, but Ty just had to jump on a fence lizard. Juvenile. Yeah, this guy probably just hatched the last week. Very cute little guy. Yeah. Now they, the the blue shows up on the, the Venta, right on these? Yep. Uh, but not on the juveniles? Yeah. It's not quite old enough yet. This one, it's a little too young to sex. But the females will kind of keep this coloring and the males will kind of get more of a copper color. Okay. And then they'll have the black and blue on the, on the belly. All right. Good catch. Yeah. Beautiful little iguana. So we just got done with fishing, we're going to go herping, but right when we're pulling out, Ty spotted a nice pickerel frog. Yeah, these are one of my favorites. You can kind of identify them. They, people say the spots kind of look squarish, but they tend to be in two straight lines. You got these two big coastal folds, and when you look at the leg, the stripes pretty much make a complete bar across. This one's not a great example. But some of these you can see definitely make a full bar across the uh, tibia. Mm -hmm. But whoop. and they do that. And they jump away. All yeah. right, good. Let's go find some other herbs. Wait, I don't want to run this guy over though. Yeah. So Ty and I are now out herping. What do you got here? So right here we got a southern leopard frog. And one of the key features of the southern leopard is if you look at the thigh patches, you see they're very yellow on the inner thigh with some black pattern. So that's a pretty easy way to tell them from the Caulfield's leopard, which we will hopefully see later tonight. So to ID this from a pickerel frog. Yep. Well, if you... well, I got some photos. Yeah. So he's got a silver spot in the tympanum and a very pointy nose and the pattern is very leopard-like. It's not as square as the pickerel. All right. Let's uh, go find some more herbs. Let's catch something big. All right. We just caught a rare frog in the net here. This is a juvenile carpenter frog. Right. I've never actually seen a juvenile before. So they're kind of closely related to a bullfrog. They're lithobates species. But if you look at that stripe down the side, very bold. And the legs are very bumpy looking. Just very beautiful frog. Oh my goodness. I'm always happy to catch these. Uh, I've only seen these in two counties in Virginia, this being one. So very, very exciting to find these guys. Oh man, these guys, they love beaver dams and swamps. So, of course, this is a great place for them. It's a beautiful little dude. Yeah. So this is probably my favorite lithobates species. Uh, they call them carpenter frogs because they're called 
uh, they kind of have a call that's kind of a kaduk, 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 kaduk. Sounds like somebody hammering a nail. Very, very neat little species. Uh, I'm just so happy we found one. Yeah, it's this not is a, pretty sweet. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty rare frog. And outside of calling season, even harder to find. Amazing. All right, little dude, you've been good. We're going to let you go. Yep. Let's set him, get him right in here in the water. So anything on my hand that got on him, he can wash off. There he goes. So it's important with amphibians to make sure your hand is wet when you're handling them. Even if that means like running your hand through some wet grass before picking them up or in the water. Because anything on your hands can go right into their bloodstream. they got permeable skin that they used to breathe. So it's very, very important that you get the frog wet or you get your hands wet before handling the frog. And I like to get the frog wet after I've handled it. All right. Let's find more. Yeah. This is either a pine woods tree frog or a copse gray tree frog. I'm leaning towards copse gray um, because it's nothing that looks too different about it. Uh, but yeah, normally, you know, barking tree frogs, which are common here, they have very different looking tadpoles. So I don't know the extremity between copse gray and pine woods tree frog tadpoles, but yeah. definitely one of the two. Pretty cool though. Yeah, love these guys. Oh wait, I would say he's... Cope's gray. He's actually already got a silver spot under the eye, oh, like yeah? the gray tree frogs have. I'll get a photo. That's awesome. That's a new one for me. Yeah. So we've got uh, some mud sunfish, and these are actually really beautiful. While yeah. we're out herping, I'm going to put it back. And it will live a long, happy life. Pretty rare fish, too, for Virginia. Yeah, it's a very rare fish. First time I've ever actually seen one or uh, handled one. And we've got another one over there that Ty's going to get some photos of. Yeah, I can. Which is, let me see if I can get him up here for you. Now he's alive. Yeah. You can see the stripes real well on him, too. Yeah, that. Oh. You can tell apart from lepamids because really just look at the caudal fin. It's rounded. And then you'll also notice if you we'll pull out the spines, you can look at the photo, it has more than three anal spines. Yeah, they don't get big either. Yeah. So what we've got Ooh. here is we've got another lithobates species of the night. This is a green frog. I say lithobates very loosely because it looks like uh, these are going to go back to the genus Rana. Uh, but pretty cool little guy. Very numerous little frog. Yep. All right, goodbye little green frog. <laughs> very brown one. So this here is a southern toad. Very, very fun little frog that we see down this way. So they look a lot like the American or Fowlers, but you know, based on the features that we'll have in the other video, you can identify the two. One of the things is when you look head on, it looks like he's got devil horns because these cranial ridges. He's a really cool little guy. So this one's a young one. They get quite a bit bigger. And they're probably the most common toad down in this area. Good find. See, yeah. driving's amazing. We keep having to stop every three minutes. I know, I go through breaks once a month. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to our next spot. Whoops. All right, good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Au revoir. This is how we're herping right now. He took me, we drove what, an hour and a half? Yeah. <laughs> we're in North Carolina and then popped back into Virginia. And now we are herping by driving. Yep. So we'll see what we find. So this here is a northern cricket frog. And it's actually... Very, very, very tiny. Oops. <laughs> that's that's Ty's hand right there. 
Yeah, little little guy. And it's actually quite amazing. <laughs> I, I don't see these that often up north in Virginia where I live, but they can jump so far for how big they are. So this is a... You know, East, yep, Eastern narrowmouth tadpole. Very, very cool find. You don't usually see the tadpoles too often. Really? Oh, he's actually kind of in that awkward phase where he's got a tail. A metamorph? Yep. It's interesting. He's got that silver patch there. I don't know if that's something they all have. This is a tadpole I just started looking at, working with, really. Here's another one in the net that also has that silver patch. Much bigger. Interesting. Very cool. Let me get it. Ty found this giant water bug. And I tell you what, I just let it bite me and that hurt. Yeah, they used to call them toe biters uh, because of that. They, they eat just about anything, including tadpoles, fish, and baby turtles. Not an animal I really want biting me. <laughs> Scariest animal of the night, that's for certain. Look at that. Nice find. It's a monster. Oh my goodness. The Atlantic Coast Slimy Salamander. That is amazing. Look Whoa. at this thing. Holy cow. I've never actually seen an adult. And this is probably a county record. Um, I'll have to go back and look. But that is an amazing, amazing salamander right there. That is... <laughs> that's, a, that's a cool one. That's my wow. highlight for the night. Uh, I've never seen one. Yeah. I've only seen two and they were both babies. <laughs> In the road on a dry night. I saw it and I was like... that. That's a weird stick. And where these guys are found, they're just found in more sandier or muddier soil down in the coastal plains. So it's kind of an interesting species. Not to mention they typically like pine forests a little more, but this here is a good hardwood swamp. So really, really cool find. Yeah. This is by far my favorite find of the night. <laughs> Should we call it a night on this specimen? I would say so. It is approaching midnight. We still have uh, an hour and a half back to your place. Yep. Oop, are you coming right to me? I don't think he knows which way he wants to go. Let's see if I can't get him to go. Well, we'll get him out of the road like this. I don't personally like touching slimy salamanders. Because mm -hmm. there's a reason they call them slimy salamanders. Um, being that they've got a substance similar to super glue that they produce. And what it will do is gum up the mouth of any predator and even glue their mouth closed. But, yeah, it just glues dirt to your hands for, you know, up to a week sometimes. Uh -huh. And no matter how much scrubbing you do, it just doesn't want to come off. You have to wait for it to exfoliate off. <laughs> so, yeah, All that's right. an amazing find, though. Good work, man. Yep. All right. Let's do it. All right, great night. It was a pleasure meeting Ty. This has been super rewarding. But you know what? I'm gonna go get some coffee, because I need to drive. Spread some knowledge, beat nature heroic.